Hello, Michael here with another how do I render tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at how do I render a realistic looking leaf. So as you can see, I've already got a leaf here in the scene. It's kind of chubby um, for a leaf, but that's fine. Um, it's going to look fairly realistic at sort of a this about about this sort of length of shot. Um, probably not really good for a macro shot. I haven't put enough detail into the surface. Obviously, I haven't created displacement maps or normal maps or anything like that. Um, and it would probably look good from a long shot as well. So that's cool. Um, so for this tutorial, we'll be using the Pixar um, surface shader. Um, and these two lights which I've already set up. So I've got one underneath uh, Just set to an intensity of 5 and one up the top sent to an intensity of 25 uh, The one underneath is mainly to show you the subsurface scattering that we're going to be using uh, So why don't we just get into it? Let's select our leaf and um, Click on the Pixar surface shader and we'll create one uh, I'm going to open up the hyper shade editor and do a bit of editing in there so you can see what I'm doing so graph that one out all right, so we're just going to select the checkerboard next to color and then go to file and I'm going to plug in a texture that I've already created uh, which is called this and then I will be able to show you in the viewport, viewport what I've done. So it's not an amazing texture but um, it will do for now. I haven't painted the bottom, I just really rushed and did some sort of outlines um, just for the sake of it. Um, I'm only going to be showing you the top so the bottom doesn't really matter for now. Um, you could probably do to go through and paint a little bit more just so you've got the option of showing the leaf from underneath or if you are going to show it from underneath obviously you want the textures on the bottom uh, but for now this will pretty much do so how it's going to work is uh, we're going to apply a subsurface scattering uh, material to this or we're going to enable subsurface scattering actually we're going to use single scatter not our subsurface um, and we're going to control the scattering using the texture map as well so let's go back into the hypershade editor and let's go down to single scatter and we're going to change the gain to be 1.0 um, and the color can just stay all the way up for now um, and then the mean free path we'll leave it uh, we'll reduce to half so we can sort of work from there as a starting point and then the mean free path color is the color is where we're going to plug our texture color into so since i've already got it mapped to the diffuse channel I'm going to map it to the uh, uh, single scatter channel as well. So I'm going to open it all the way up and then just type scat um, and then we're going to get single scatter MFP color which is the single scatter mean free path color. So we're just going to connect our color to that. Um, and then why don't we take a quick render and just see what we're working with for now. All right, so as you can see, um, we've got some things happening. It's not quite right as it is. Um, I think the diffuse channel is too high. And as a matter of fact, before we get too much further into it, I'm just going to turn the diffuse channel off so we can just see the subsurface scattering for the moment. Um, and while I remember, let's increase the specularity just a fraction. Um, I think 0.05 should be, no, 0.05 is way too much, 0.05. Let's roll with that for a second, just increase the roughness. Yeah, to roughly there. So roughness at about 0.6 looks good. Um, all right, so let's go back down to a single scatter. So what's happening is um, the color channel at the moment is just basically, you could kind of think of it as um, controlling the gain of this, the scattering underneath. So if we increase it all the way up, we're going to get a lot more scattering. If we reduce it, we're not going to get much at all, or zero basically. So um, I'm going to have it all the way up for the moment, and then we're going to play around with the mean free path to sort of um, figure out where we want to be as to how much scattering we have. So um, if I increase it all the way up, you get a lot of scattering, but it's absorbing quite a bit of light. So if we pull it back down to say uh, maybe 4.0, I'm just going to check those lights are hot enough as well. It's going to increase that light intensity to 10 so I get a bit more light coming through. And then go back to our texture, our material rather. All right, so it's starting to look kind of realistic. Um, now we're losing quite a bit of the texture as you can see because of the subsurface scattering, but that's okay because we're gonna pull the diffuse channel back up. What I really wanna make sure that's happening is that the light is being transmitted through the lighter areas of the leaf. So that's like the veins um, 
and uh, well, the, sort of like the, the center of the veins and then the lighter areas around the veins and there'll be some sort of shadows created next to the veins because of the way I've painted this texture. So that's pretty much happening as it is. So um, we might just roll with that for now um, and let's jump back over to the diffuse channel and let's just start pulling it in slowly. Um, actually, I'm going to push the roughness of the diffuse channel to 1.0 as well. And um, let's go till we start to get some of that detail back. Just change that view slightly so I can get a better look at the surface of it. Okay, so I played with that just a little bit. Um, so I've changed the gain of the diffuse channel to be 0.65 and the roughness to be 0.5. Um, and then the mean free path, which is the length of, uh, of subsurface scattering is 3.3 and the gain is one and the color is set to uh, uh, white. Now, if I change this color to say be more of a yellow color, um, maybe like a sort of a highlighter green, almost yellow color, uh, and run that again, I'll show you the difference. All right, so if you compare the two, um, the one with the color change to be the uh, orangey color just has uh, more of a glowing sort of effect uh, to the overall uh, feel of the leaf. So if you're looking for a little bit more uh, sort of perceived translucence, you can get a little bit of extra out of that as well without having to dive into uh, further subsurface scattering. Um, so that might be a good way to hot up your image. Um, now this is not realistic per se. It's not like using um, physical based lining because normally you'd just be using a range from zero to one for that. But uh, for the sake of this tutorial, and for the sake of artistic intent, uh, I think this works well. So if you compare the two, I think it just, it's very, it's very minor, but it does make a bit of a difference, I think. So yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it, really. Um, you get yourself a fairly realistic looking leaf. Uh, if you do a better job of painting the texture than I did, uh, spend more than 10 minutes on it, um, you will probably get a better looking leaf. Make sure you vary the surface of the color. Uh, don't just have a flat color. Make sure there's some slight variations in the value and the tone. Um, and then obviously painting in the, um, painting in the veins. Uh, make sure there are a fairly high value color so you get that translucency at those points. Um, and the vein that runs down the center as well needs to be a high value. Um, and then you could also, if you wanted to go further, you could paint normal maps um, in as well, or you could do a, a displacement map. But I'd only really recommend that if you were going to be doing a, um, a very close up tight shot on the leaf, like you were using it for sort of a macro shot or something like that. All right, so one final adjustment you can make um, if you wish is you could put some raindrops on your leaf to make it look like it's been raining. Uh, so it's pretty easy to create these raindrops. I'll just show you one of the ones that I've pre-made. So all it is, it's a sphere um, that I have cut in half and then I've just grabbed the, uh, the lower edge and I've sized it to be smaller. So there's a slight overhang um, because uh, that's sort of the way a droplet of water walk works. It sort of comes in on itself a little bit. Um, you would be, you would know that if you looked at some reference, which you should always do when you are trying to do these sorts of things. Um, and then, yeah, and then just do a smooth subdivision on them um, and apply a glass shader to them, which I've already done as well, uh, which I'll show you. So it's just the, um, diffuse gain to zero and then your glass refraction gain and reflection gain to 1.0 and then just a little bit of specularity as well. You also want to make sure that you go into your render settings and go to sampling and then go to um, integrator and allow caustics that way you get the light being refracted through the surface. I did also make some slight adjustments to the um, surface of the leaf to get it to look like it was wet. Um, I actually increased the diffuse gain a little bit as well. Um, as well as keeping the specular the same, um, but I added a slight clear coat to it, a very, very low value 0 0.001 um, and 0 0.1 in roughness. And I'll show you what that render sort of shows up like. So there's a not high um, sample rate render, but um, yeah, that's just at about um, 60 samples, I think, or 16 samples rather. Um, and as you can see, it looks fairly realistic. I could probably do to do a lot more detail to the leaf, but um, just as a quick example, it sort of does the trick, I think. So yes, hopefully this tutorial has been useful to you out there in YouTube land. Um, thank you very much to 
Joy Percy for uh, requesting this particular tutorial. I hope it's helped um, and if you've liked it make sure you click that like button uh, so other people can find it and um, if you'd like to see more tutorials uh, make sure you're subscribed because I do two tutorials a week. Um, and if you would like a tutorial, make sure you're requesting it in the comments. I've got a running uh, list of requests that I'm slowly working my way through. Otherwise, um, that's pretty much it for now. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.